words. I like words. As I teach my three-year-old and six-year-old their phonics, and I'm doing that a lot at the moment, <laughs> um, on a good day we make up silly poems uh, using maybe like one letter of the alphabet and then we try to make each other laugh. I'm reminded again as I do this, the deep love of poetry and language and words that I actually have. But words can also cause hurt, can't they? We know that in some, in many ways, uh, we realise online, we see people getting hurt, cutting each other down with their words. And then beyond all this, what about words? Well, <laughs> words that I think about when, uh, that my kids are trying to learn, like new things, they're trying to pick up and can be just so misunderstood, can't they? I love hearing my kids trying out a difficult word, uh, trying to put it into context uh, when they're using their own, in their own sentence, sometimes impressively right, <laughs> like, oh, what are you saying? And then other times it's quite endearing uh, when it's completely misses the mark. But as adults, well, we know many words and how to use them. It's amazing, I'm always struck. Um, how we often don't understand each other because our language has got in the way and I don't just mean different language even if we're all speaking the same we're misunder we misunderstand each other we, we're misinterpreting each other we mean different things even using the same word in the same language today our scripture the famous passage the beginning of John's gospel it starts not with a birth narrative like Matthew, Mark and Luke, but John, who is depicted as that soaring eagle, takes the bird's eye view and starts with placing Jesus at the very beginning of everything. It says this, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Hmm. So we start with the word, the word. This passage from John's Gospel has been poured over, hasn't it, for many centuries by many important and intelligent disciples. Uh, in those first few centuries, these words were used to try and figure out who this Jesus of Nazareth character was and how on earth he was God. How is Jesus God? This passage was used to try and see what this issue was. What is the, what was called the substance? What was he made of? How was Jesus one and the same? Was he one and the same being as God the Father? Or was he just similar or like? Or maybe <clears throat> it was even inappropriate, people thought, to speak of God being incarnate, being made in flesh at all. Maybe God should just be known as transcendent. These were all arguments that went on and on for centuries. And in the end, the consensus was that Jesus was both one being with the Father, but was also separate. This beautiful paradox of the Trinity, the celebration of unity and difference, the vision of how the mechanics, how is it work? Well, us in the Western world trying to make sense of this using the history and a sense of time. But that's a lot of words, isn't it? Theologians using words to try and work out the divine, work out who God is. I read something this week. Um, it was in the political theologian um, and the article was by John Allen and I loved this uh, because it was just a very it was all about the different approach a different way from the normal western way John Allen invites us uh, to see that we don't have to only interpret in the traditional western academic approach to theology uh, but if we're curious and we dare to ask wisdom from a wider group of sources then we might discover that in fact, a Native American approach, in fact, sees things very differently. Native American theologian Vinay De De Deloria uh, suggests that the Western world approach to the word, to recognising what and how we describe the world and history and language, is actually all about a beginning, a middle and an end a uh, future. It's a linear approach. It kind of goes along a line from starting back there and goes all the way along. But Deloria explains the Native American approach is radically different. They don't actually see life, which again is a bit of a mind bend for us, but they don't see life in relation to history in a linear way. In, it's not about what happened and what then happened, but instead they see it in a 
a spatial worldview. It's like a one thing all going on at the same time. They understand um, how life is with where, what has happened and what is going to happen and how it interacts with now. How now interacts with before and the future and how it's seen together. So the truth, the concept of truth, the concept of reality for Native American is one of a continuous process of adjustment to the natural surroundings. It's not just about a specific message that's valid for all times and places. It's contextual. In such a way of seeing the world, any sense of history, Alan says, becomes subordinated, it comes lessened to, in fact, the more important thing is the present experience of the community in their place. Okay, so what if we catch a glimpse of what that might mean for Jesus being God, the incarnate, the God who becomes human? Well, it means that it didn't just happen in a particular time and space back then, just back then in a time and space to make the world a better place, to save us for a future time. But instead, God is being born in us continually. Okay, what? You might say, um, I'm in the middle of lockdown. I haven't, I'm tired. I haven't got my head around this. I haven't got a chance to look, think about it. So let me suggest another way. What if, as we heard last week, the theologian Sam Wells, well, we go back to what he was saying, when he said that God came to be with us. What if God didn't just come as a baby and live and die in that one time event? just to show us how to be a superhero who comes in to sort the mess out. It's a transactional thing and actually a pretty cruel one, cruel transaction, you know, where God has to sacrifice his own son. What if, what if we look to the words of John's gospel and we look to how this baby is growing and going to show us the way that helps us every year, that helps us in all times, in all places, that continually is happening again and again shows us the way to the cross as Lent approaches in all our times and places, that Jesus is showing us how life really is, that God is with us, that God's true self is love, that love is relationship, that love is with. The word is with God. The word is with us. The Native American approach to life and the reality is that God's intention is to become like the stuff of this world in specific moments. To love and live in community. Maybe we as contemporary Christians need to talk less. Talk less with words. And let our words take on some skin and flesh in the world. Do you know what? I was taken so much this week when I saw and heard a group of people come together on Zoom to celebrate the victory of Sanford Court Test Centre being moved to a bigger non-residential bus station away from people's homes around here. It was really moving for people who were each strangers to each other just a few months ago. These people were across the divides of religion, Haredi and Mazorti Jews, Anglicans, Catholics, atheists, all together, spanning the ages, a rich mix of ethnicities. And here was everyone together and smiling, despite the awfulness of COVID. And these people who had come together to go, yes, we did this thing, we can't believe it happened, but we did it, we raised our voices and we were heard, we didn't let go. Well, they wanna do something else. These people are saying, what next can we do to make this part of our world better? We did it once. We didn't know we could, but we could and we now know each other. And what's better? We want to build relationships with each other. How can we build better relationships? Amazing. One story that came up made me beam, but also like filled me with emotion. 
and it only happened just the day before this meeting, but uh, someone had had a problem with her cooker. And because of this, of this thing that she'd now connected with so many more people in the local area, she felt confident to reach out to an, her neighbours. She knew them as well. She was connected with them. She knew their numbers. She was on a WhatsApp group. So she, she put it on there and just said, can anyone help me? And everyone jumped up, apparently all wanting to check their own cookers to see whether their system had gone down too, all given advice. These people didn't know each other before. To me, this is a small example of love. It's of being with. It's a sign and witness of the power of relationship, of community organising, working for justice as Christians. It can be so much more than just doing good things for others just using our flesh to help out others. In fact, it's more and more about love. It's not about for others, oh you poor things, let me help you. No, it's about being with others. It's about building relationships so that we can be with each other in good times and in bad. It's not saying like, I'm the privileged one and you're not, let me help you, no. It's saying, we're all in this together. What can we learn from one another? What is your gift and what is mine? And oh my goodness, what can we do? This is the desire of God. The spirit of love desires to flow in and through us to bring hope and healing, reconciliation and wholeness. So may we spot love's flow in our lives. May you see where God is inviting you to join with others. The word made flesh and dwelt among us, creator, son, spirit, each with each other. The word is with God. The word was God. The word dwelt with us. Would you like to come and hang out with this love? Amen. <laughs>